It is the 24th of September in this day in Baptist history. We are reading His Ways Are Past Finding Out. Our passage of scripture is Romans chapter 11 and verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. What grief swept through the Baptist Mission Office when the following message sent on September 24th, 1942 was read. And I quote, Dear sirs, we regret to inform you, end of quote. The West African Boat Company was thus notifying the mission agency that the SS West Lysha Way, a ship on which the Shaw family, missionaries to French Equatorial Africa, now known as Central African Republic, was sailing, had been sunk by a German submarine. Surely missionaries with children on the mission fields of the world were confronted, confronted with a serious conundrum when the Second World War broke out. In the early days of the war, the shipping lanes in the Atlantic were in constant peril of the German U-boats, and soon after Japan entered the fray, the Japanese Navy ruled the Pacific. Harvey and Carol Shaw had joined a fundamentalist Baptist mission in 1937. And when their first term in French Equatorial Africa ended, the German fleet formed a heavy presence in the Atlantic. The Shaws had proven themselves capable workers and were revered by both fellow missionaries and the nationals whom they served. The decision whether to remain on the field or return to America, however, was taken out of the Shaws' control as serious health problems in 1942 demanded that they seek medical care in the States. Thus, on June 4, 1942, they left Bangu with their children, three children, Richard 13, Georgia 11, and Carol 7. They planned to meet two missionary ladies at Matai, and then all of, all of them would sail on the cargo steamer SS West Lishaway. The two ladies did not arrive at Matai on time, and the Shahs sailed without them. The SS West Lashaway was laden with a cargo of cocoa beans and palm oil. A few days later, the ship stopped to pick up another missionary, Mrs. Ethel Bell, a missionary of the Christian Missionary Alliance, along with her two children, Mary, 13, and Robert, 11. The Shaw children enjoyed the companionship of the Bell children, and on one stop, the youngsters found a place to swim. Surely that stop was of the Lord, for Richard learned there for the first time to float and propel himself in the water. As the sea voyage continued without warning, a German torpedo ripped open the ship and the sea poured in. The ship careened out of control and finally pitched over. Harvey Shaw and two of his children, Richard and Carol, were on the deck. When the ship heaved, the three were thrown clear into the sea. Mrs. Shaw and Georgia were trapped in their cabin and with no chance of escape were taken to a watery grave. No one had been wearing a life jacket and Richard was pulled down by the suction. He surfaced, gasping for air. Using his newly acquired skill, he paddled to reach a sailor. Richard was confused when the seaman kept plunging his head beneath the surface. He did not realize that the German U-boat had surfaced and was firing at the survivors. When the submarine left, about 40 survivors were afloat. Life rafts had been automatically released by the sinking ship, and the sailor and Richard managed to reach a raft where they found Richard's sister already on board. She had sustained a severely broken arm. Another sailor called out, Help me! This man is wounded! As they hoisted the victim into the raft, they discovered it was Mr. Shaw. He was hardly recognizable, for he was caked with palm oil. The four rafts were lashed together for added protection. During their first night afloat, the ship's captain lifted Mr. Shaw into one of the other rafts and cut it loose. The captain's act was one of mercy. Mr. Shaw was dying, and the ship's captain did not have the heart to allow the children to see their father suffering greatly as his life ebbed away. The next 21 days formed a period of pure agony. Thankfully, Mrs. Bell, who had also survived, used her treasure trove of memorized scripture and hymns as a source of invaluable strength. 
The coating of palm oil actually protected the skin of the survivors from the burning rays of the scorching sun. Food and water had to be carefully rationed. The nights were cold and at times the survivors were drenched by the seawater. Mrs. Bell prayed for fresh water and God answered. Clouds gathered and soon the men were able to catch a good supply of fresh water in a large canvas. Thank God for prayer warriors. Late into the third week of their sea adventure, an Allied destroyer spotted the little flotilla and thinking it was an enemy submarine, opened fire with 16 shells. Fortunately, all of the shells missed their mark and the crew on the destroyer finally realized that they were firing on the three rafts. When a rope was lowered from the destroyer, none of the survivors was able to climb it. Their feet were raw and swollen from the salt water and painful ulcers had crested on their bodies. The war-hardened sailors on the British destroyer wept to think that they had fired on such victims. The survivors were transferred to another ship and taken to the island of Barbados, Barbados for medical care. When the time came that the Shaw children could travel, they were flown to Miami, where missionary partners of the Shaws took custody of the children and lovingly cared for them. In later life, Richard entered the ministry and his sister Carol served the Lord as well. Why? Why should godly people of whom the world was not worthy die in the midst of a life of service for the Savior? I cannot answer that question, but I know that our Lord is too loving ever to be unkind to his own, and he is too wise ever to make a mistake. Surely it is not within man to direct his steps. Some day, yonder in eternity, we shall all have our questions answered by him who is truth. Until that time, may we learn to trust where we cannot trace our path. To God be the glory.